DNA replication requires uh, a DNA template, all the deoxynucleoside triphosphates, and a three prime and a primer with an available three prime hydroxyl group is required. The enzymes involved are DNA polymerase, uh, RNA primase, a helicase, single stranded binding proteins, and a, a DNA gyrase or topoisomerase. In this um, in this video, we'll talk only about DNA polymerase and primase. I won't say anything about helicase, single stranded binding proteins, or topoisomerase, but they're involved in the separation of the double stranded helix into single stranded regions. So here we have uh, DNA polymerase, which is the circle on top, uh, a double stranded DNA, and all the nucleoside triphosphates available. Uh, the helicase and single-stranded binding proteins are involved in opening up single-stranded regions of DNA, as shown here on the left, uh, where we now have single-stranded regions available. But DNA polymerase can't act on them because DNA polymerase requires a 3-prime hydroxyl. The enzyme RNA primase uh, comes in and binds to single-stranded DNA and polymerizes a short strand of RNA that is complementary to the template strand. This provides uh, an RNA primer that is now uh, has a three prime hydroxyl that's available for the DNA polymerase to act on. So DNA polymerase can recognize this structure and can now extend and add nucleoside triphosphates that are complementary to the template strand. So shown here in red is newly synthesized DNA. This structure is now a chimeric single-stranded molecule that is base paired to DNA. This chimeric molecule is green and red. The green represents some RNA and the red is DNA. DNA polymerase continues to polymerize DNA uh, in a complementary manner to the template. Uh, on the strand as it goes towards this, what we're going to call the replication fork. The bottom strand template is polymerized in a similar way, in exactly the same way, really. Uh, RNA primase uh, comes into the single-stranded region, generates an, a, short single, a short primer of RNA that now provides a 3-prime hydroxyl for DNA polymerase to recognize and then can polymerize DNA uh, on uh, based on the temp complementarity to the template strand. Helicase and single-stranded binding proteins are then involved in continuing to provide open single-stranded regions of DNA. And given a 3' prime hydroxyl, the, uh, the DNA polymerase can continue to extend the strand that is polymerizing towards the replication fork. The bottom strand, however, requires the synthesis of a new fragment, which involves, again, RNA primase generating a short primer, providing a 3' prime hydroxyl that now DNA polymerase can act upon and generate now a chimeric uh, region that's both RNA and DNA, and now extend DNA in a complementary manner to the template. Okay, so this is a replication fork. Uh, the replication fork, we're, uh, I want you to learn the nomenclature used here. So uh, the leading strand is the new strand that is synthesized continuously towards the fork. So there's the leading strand, and of course the template of that is referred to as the leading strand template. The bottom strand is referred to as the lagging strand, so there are two lagging strands here, little these fragments and they are base paired with the lagging strand template. So to review that, the newly synthesized strand that it is polymerizing into the replication fork, the leading strand, is polymerized continuously. The new strands that are being polymerized away from the replication fork, the lagging strands, are polymerized discontinuously, generating a series of fragments. Okay, so that's a replication fork fully labeled.
So if you understand this, then you should be able to uh, appropriately label the following structures. So I'm just going to show a few. I'm not going to say anything. Well, uh, and let's see if you can label them. So A, B, C, and D, can you label the leading strand, the leading strand template, the lagging strands, and the lagging strand template? So here's one structure. Here is an alternative structure, an another fork coming from the other direction. And you can always stop the video and look at that. A third one has less information. And the question here is, can you fill in both the leading and the lagging strands? The templates are shown. Can you draw in the leading and the lagging strands appropriately? Remembering that all double-stranded nucleic acids must be anti-parallel. Here's a structure that shows no directionality, but does have some information. And the question here is, can you identify the leading strand, the leading strand template, the lagging strands, and the lagging strand templates? And in the final structure, the question is the same. So this short video is just to help you understand what a replication fork looks like and to be able to label it. In following videos, we'll move on from the replication fork to uh, a fully replicated DNA and talk about other issues.